Okay, let's tackle this problem here. And the problem is how many seconds are in one week? So all of you out there should be able to do this problem. Uh, hopefully all of you have a good sense of what a second is and what a week is. So we're talking about time. And uh, some of you might be like, well, what's the practical value of doing this? Well, there is no practical value other than practicing uh, your math skills. And that's the whole idea here. But a lot of you uh, can be like, all right, I can do this. Let me get my calculator real quick and you can knock out uh, this problem and you could put your answer right in here. So um, before you look at my answer, okay, you should put your answer if you think you know how to do it. I certainly encourage you to, um, you know, structure how you would solve this problem. All of you should be able to solve this problem because we're dealing with concepts that, you know, most 99.9% .9 of people out here are familiar with. Now, the one thing that I like you to do, though, which is going to be a little bit different, is how would you explain how to do this problem? Let's say this is you, and you're explaining it to your little brother or sister, okay, that's in second grade or something like that. Uh, how would you explain that, okay? Uh, because one thing is... Uh, is like a really great rule uh, to see if you truly know something is how well you can teach it. If you can teach something, you know, if you're great at teaching something, that means you yourself know that uh, uh, very, very well, okay, whatever that subject is. I'm obviously teaching math. I know math pretty strongly. But if I try to teach you English grammar, you would definitely want to uh, run away from my videos because I would <laughs> be horrible. Uh, anyways, so you know, listen, we're all good at different things, right? Uh, but the, you know, if you're an expert in Xbox or a particular uh, Fortnite or whatever, whatever game or whatever team, maybe you're an expert in uh, the San Francisco 49ers, whatever the case is, whatever you're an expert in, guess what? You can teach people about it. So this particular problem, what I want you to do is be like, okay, other than just give me a number, what you know, which is your answer, that's fine. But how would you explain it, okay? If you can sp explain it very well in an organized way, okay, then that means that you have very good logic and command of what's going on. So I want you to kind of be thinking about that, right? That's an excellent kind of principle to remember. If you can teach something very, very well, okay? Uh, so like being in a math class, for example, and say you're studying algebra and you can explain your to your best friend uh, that uh, was on their cell phone not paying attention. They were like, oh, yeah, I, I didn't pay. What was that? What was that? What did the teacher say? If you can explain that problem, that means you know it very well. Okay. And, and uh, so that's just a good test. All right. I don't want to go off on too many tangents, but I want you to be thinking in those terms because I'm not just interested in your ability to give me the right answer. I'm interested in your command of these uh, principles and things that we're going to be talking about here. So what are some of the concepts that we are involved? Well, we're really talking about different units of time, okay? Different units of time. And more precisely, we're talking about converting, okay? We're going to be uh, converting from one unit of time, which is a second, to another unit of time, which is a week. So really kind of um, the main idea, the underlying uh, idea of this particular video is conversion. Okay, how do we do con how do we do conversion factors, etc. So we're going to get to all this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years, I've uh, constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses. I have all the um, main courses uh, from pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here shortly. But I have a lot of specialty uh, courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for an exam like the GED, SAT, ACT, um, the CLEP exam, AccuPlacer, Alex, uh, teacher certification, ASVAB, there's a lot of reasons people study math outside of a math course. Uh, a lot of so many exams, professional exams, college exams, uh, vocational exams um, have a lot of math on them. OK, so if you're just trying to wing it, you're taking a big a big chance of not being successful on these exams because there is a lot of uh, math on a lot of different types of exams. Anyways, you can go to my website uh, and just look at my course catalog. I should have your exam. If I don't have your exam, 
just go ahead and write me a uh, contact me through uh, our contact page and I'll get back to you with my best guidance. Also work with independent learners like homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning program. And then obviously I help those of you that are just struggling in your math class. Okay. If you're struggling, I can definitely help you out. Definitely help you out. But one thing you have to be doing to help uh, yourself out in mathematics, and I assume that you're interested in improving your math if you're watching this video, is taking great math notes, okay? Over decades of teaching the subject, it's one thing that's clear to me. Those students who take great math notes almost always end up doing excellent in math, and the reverse is true. Those students who like talking to other people in class, okay? Not paying attention to the teacher, checking her social media, all the things that I did, except for the social media part. Um, back in the 80s, we didn't have that internet thing, which is so cool, but don't worry, I was completely distracted. So listen, I made all the mistakes, um, and you, okay, if you're not doing well in math, you're probably distracted, okay? And the way to keep from being distracted is to take notes and remain focused. That's just the bottom line, okay? There's no cheating that, and you can't, don't be one of these people who be like, oh, I got a photographic memory, or I'll just borrow my friend's notes. Now, the, the idea is you are uh, paying attention and writing things down. Just trust me on this. This is the key to success in mathematics. But as you start improving in your note taking, I actually offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. Find links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so here we go. So, how many seconds are in one week? Uh, I would suggest that you go ahead and pause the video if you want to play along here and give me your answer. Uh, feel free to use a calculator, I have no problem with that. But again, I'm most in interested in how you would explain this to like a young person. Okay, that's what I'm interested in. All right, so let's go down here and take a look at uh, my solution and your solution could be uh, different, it's fine, okay? As long as it's logical and I kind of understand that you under, uh, know how to convert from one unit to another. So let's go ahead and start this way. This is the way I approached it. Uh, we'll start with minutes, okay? So one minute is 60 seconds. Everyone should know that, okay? So let's get some basic conversion factors down here. So one minute is 60 seconds. Now, now that I know how many uh, seconds are in a minute, Let's talk about minutes to hours. So I know 60 minutes is in one hour. Okay, so how many hours in a day? Well, there's 24 hours in one day. And then in one week, we have, uh, well, let's write this up here, actually. One week is equal to seven days. Okay, so you can see here, I can jump from seconds to minutes. Minutes, okay, I can jump to hours. And then I can go to days, and then once I'm in days, I can jump to weeks. And that's kind of how conversion factors work. But more specifically, I want you to get to, uh, used to these equivalencies. So one minute uh, uh, is equal to 60 seconds. A good way of writing that, okay, is the following. So one minute is to 60 seconds. Or write it as a fraction. This is very, very important because what I'm showing you here. Um, it's going to help you uh, help you in other classes as well, like say chemistry or physics when you have to do uh, units of measure conversion. Very, very important. So we, we want to write this conversion as one minute is equal to 60 seconds. You can write it this way, one minute over 60 seconds or one minute to 60 seconds. Write it as a fraction. And now we're going to multiply this by this conversion factor. Okay. So I want to know, okay, uh, how many minutes or an hour. So what I want to do here, okay, is multiply this conversion factor by this conversion factor. I have one hour to 60 uh, minutes. Now notice something here. Here, uh, look at my units of measure. So if I wanted to know how many uh, seconds were, were in one hour, I can go, okay, one minute to 60 seconds times one hour is to 60 minutes. But when I multiply across, the units of measure cross cancel. And so I would say, okay, now I'm multiplying fractions. How do you multiply fractions? You multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So this would be 1 over 60 times 60, which would be 360. But what's the unit of measure here? Well, that's seconds, right? So 360 seconds to what? The remaining unit of measure and uh, the numerator is an hour. 
Okay, so one hour is 300 or 3,000, excuse me, 3,600 seconds. Okay, so when you're multiplying units of measure, you always need to look to cross cancel uh, the, uh, the particular units. So you end up with the units that you want. Now, again, a lot of you out there are going to be able to get the right answer, but this is uh, the uh, I really want you to kind of understand these conversion factors and how to work with them. So let's continue on here. So uh, one day has 24 hours, so one day to 24 hours. Now, look what happens when I um, uh, look at these units of measure. So I have minutes and minutes, okay? And then I have uh, hours and I have hours. So let's cross cancel here. So the minutes are gonna go away when I multiply this whole fraction here. Uh, okay, so minutes and minutes are gonna go away and hours and hours are gonna go away. And what am I gonna be left with? Well, I'm left with day. I'm going to be left with one day. And I'm going to be left with seconds. Okay, seconds down here. So I'm going to determine how many seconds are in one day. So how many seconds are in one day? Well, it's going to be 60 times 60 times 24. Okay, so I actually did that math here. So 60 times 60 times 24, <coughs> excuse me, is... Uh, 86,400 seconds, so 86,400 uh, seconds are in one day. So one day has 86,400 seconds. Perfect, okay? So now at this point, because I know that one week is seven days, I just need to take this day here and multiply it by seven. So most of you could see, all right, that's pretty easy to do. So we'll take how many seconds are in this one day We'll multiply it by seven days, which will give me one week. So seven times uh, 86,400 uh, 86, is going to be uh, 604,800 seconds. So that is the answer. And if you got that right, definitely give yourself a smiley face and an A+. Plus. But one thing that um, you know I want you to appreciate is how would you explain this to like a second grader? Someone, you know, this is, they would be kind of like, Hmm. They could very well be kind of like uh, clueless. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. So, you know, anytime you want to um, get an, gain an appreciation to what a teacher, like a math teacher has to go through, you know, when you try to teach something that's, that's abstract, you might understand it, but somebody else may not. Okay. That's why, you know, uh, you never want to assume that what you're doing, you know, what you turn in your work to your math teacher, that, you know, your teacher is going to just give you a break and be like, oh, yeah, I'm just assuming you understand all that. You need to validate it and structure it. So a great way, again, to uh, think uh, is to organize your logic as if you were teaching. OK, so if you're like, OK, I'm going to show you this, this, this and this and this and walk through a logical set of steps to get to your answer. And there's different uh, ways stylistically that you can do it. Um, but anyways, if you were able to kind of do this, if you feel like, hey, yeah, no, I was able to explain that to somebody else. Maybe you do have someone, uh, you know, you can teach this to maybe a, you know, a cousin. Maybe you want to go to your mom. Hey, mom, let's go ahead and figure out how many uh, seconds are in a week. And uh, she'll be like, uh, no, thank you. I'm busy uh, doing whatever. Well, listen, you get it, right? Now, uh, again, the one the one way you know you really know something is if you can teach it, okay? And you, everyone should strive to be, to, to teach uh, something. It doesn't have to be math because just teaching and explaining is an excellent uh, life skill to have. All right, so hopefully uh, this video, you know, uh, the whole point here was um, not for you to just to get the right answer, but you to kind of practice conversion factors. Again, this comes up very, very um, a big time in classes like chemistry, physics, science, and, and in mathematics uh, as well. But anytime you're dealing with units of measure, okay, uh, and conversion, you need to know how to handle those conversion factors as we did by cross-canceling, et cetera, et cetera. So I have a lot more uh, practice problems uh, like this in my pre-algebra and algebra playlist. Uh, so anyways, let's go ahead and wrap this video up. If you like this video in some small way, please consider tapping or maybe uh, better yet, smashing that like button. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Been on YouTube for a long time. And as I said, I have tons of videos organized on my channel from basic to advanced math. Uh, so 
you know, I kind of cover the entire span of things, and I'm posting new videos all the time. But my best work will be found uh, in my Math Help program, which you know where to find. That link will be in the description of this video. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.